Right. So hyper-Bitcoinization does not just happen. It requires people and companies building scalable, interoperable, open source software. Next up, we have John Carvalho, CEO at Synonym with More Than a Wallet. Please give John a warm welcome to the stage. Hello. Okay, so I'm here today to present um, More Than a Wallet, a new era for Bitcoin in the web. My name is John Carvalho. I am CEO at Synonym. Um, for those of you don't, who don't know what Synonym is, well, we're basically a company that's trying to assume that Bitcoin has already won. We want to show a sort of alternative economy that has all of the different software, services, protocols that you would need to basically have a world where we know that Bitcoin is the primary store of value and it has basically dismantled the powers of big banks, big tech, big government to have central control and oppressive power over the individual. Um, in order to kind of achieve this vision, we have several design principles that help, you know, will help you understand what we do at the company and how we make decisions about which, which technology to use, which technology to build, and which products to provide. Um, the first one is Bitcoin, not blockchain. So we just basically believe that the only thing, literally the only thing that you need a blockchain for is Bitcoin. You don't need any type of blockchain for any reason other than Bitcoin. So side chains, shit coins, altcoins, any type of chain you can think of, none of them are actually relevant or necessary or providing anything extra. Um, we build with Bitcoin, not on it. We do not use blockchains. You cannot scale a blockchain with a blockchain, etc. cetera. Um, as, you know, going through that again, we need everything to be scalable. So that means, again, if, if blockchains don't scale very well, then why would we try to use them for every problem? We want to relegate it only specifically to the problem of uncensorable money that you don't have to trust anyone to use. Primarily, this is for, um, we believe that in order to have such an economy, you need to maximize for a circular economy, which means, in its most simple form, just reducing conversion. We don't want people to have to keep converting things to be able to get done, be able to do what they're trying to get done. Um, the third uh, quality and design principle that we respect is everything being interoperable. We want to make sure that however you operate in a digital economy, that you are fully portable and dynamic and you are controlling the situation. Um, privacy minded. We think that uh, the most important question when it comes to privacy is who do you trust? Um, I believe that privacy is lost, not gained, and so you're always having to decide in a network situation especially who you are performing in front of, who you are interacting with, who you are choosing to have be part of your digital actions because you are always creating metadata when you act on a network and you want to be selective about who can see you on that network. So we're very privacy minded in trying to keep things localized and relative to only the people that need to be involved. And then the final one that I'll mention today at least is self-custodial. You know, we want you to hold the key for everything. We want you to hold your own Bitcoin, hold your own data, hold your own uh, accounts, contacts, etc. Again, please placing the individual at the center, not the server. We don't want the situation with big banks where they hold all your money, with big tech where they have all your data in a walled garden. We want you to be the one in control. Again, putting the keys in your hands. Keys aren't just for Bitcoin. Keys are for your data. Keys are for your identity. Keys are for everything in the future. In the new Bitcoin economy, you're going to need more than a wallet. If you have keys that are you're using for everything, you need, you need keys and you need tools to be able to operate in this new economy. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a video introducing you into the product that we're releasing. Um, and then I'm going to continue and describe the product. Most of the borders and limits we experience in life are imaginary, made up only by ourselves and by those around us. 
let us free ourselves from these restrictions. Imagine a world without these limits, a world where you are in charge of your digital life, a world where you can express yourself economically, socially, and intellectually in any way you see fit, a world where you can send money for anything to anyone, anywhere, a world where your identity is a reflection of who you are, not a card in your wallet. A world where you own and control your social presence and whatever value you create or save. We can have a free and open society where people can be human. Now, what if that world already exists? What if you use Bitcoin to reboot the web? Introducing BitKit. Bitcoin everything, Bitcoin everywhere. Handing you the keys to unlock your digital life. Thank you. So, BitKit, um, we've been working really hard for more than a year now on trying to figure out the best way to encompass a full toolkit for everything you would need to operate in this digital economy that we're trying to build, this, this possible future where Bitcoin has won. And so we ended up with this application, this mobile app called BitKit, um, to be your ultimate Bitcoin toolkit. We're all here today for a few reasons. Um, if you look at the brochures and the website for the Plan B Forum, you'll see that there are three tracks to this conference. And we think that BitKit and our whole vision really um, is, is illustrated very well and in, in that these priorities are covered very well by this application. So we're going to start by framing it through these three tracks. One, Bitcoin adoption. Obviously, we want everybody to have the opportunity to have the kind of freedom qualities of Bitcoin to financial freedom. You know, we want to make sure that people, again, aren't, you know, stuck and oppressed by banks or their governments. And freedom of speech, same thing. We want to make sure people can say and be whoever they really are. So how does Bitcoin help with all of this? All right, let's start with Bitcoin adoption. You know, a lot of people like to worry about, oh, Bitcoin's too complicated for my grandmother, uh, Lightning is too complicated, etc. So we decided to like rethink the entire wallet experience. We kind of ignored a lot of what it, people have done in the past, and we tried to think of if we if we designed everything from the user's perspective, how easy can we make this? You know, how how easy can Bitcoin really be to use, including all of the modern technology like Lightning Network? So we've removed terms that like, are oriented and, and biased towards the developers that have created these technologies, and again, changing the perspective to the user. So we don't talk about the Lightning Network. We don't talk about liquidity channels, you know, things like this, nodes. We talk in user terms. If the user is using something related to the Lightning Network, it's because of instant payments. So we say instant payments. You know, if you want your Bitcoin to go instantly, then this is what you need to do. So here are some features you know, within this category. We have this concept of spending and saving. So you have your on-chain balance, which is your Bitcoin on the, the normal blockchain, is treated as your savings account. Your spending balance or your lightning connectivity is, treating, is treated as spending balance. And so we have this very, very simple user interface for simply getting onto the lightning network. That's just clicking that little transfer button between Bitcoin and savings, and you get the slider. And when you're done configuring the slider, you're just choosing how much Bitcoin you want to put on the lightning network. So now you can just, you know, Give it to your grandmother and say, hey, how much do you want to be able to spend instantly? Choose here. And then it tells you what it will cost to set it up. You confirm, and that's it. You're on Lightning. Get paid easily. You want to receive Bitcoin. You want to get a payment. There's no configuring of an invoice unless you want to. All of the advanced features that you would want in a wallet are there. You just have to enable them or set the preferences for them if you are an advanced user. But when you want to get paid, just show a QR code. Doesn't matter if it's on chain, if it's lightning, it's got both inside the QR code, a unified QR code. So when you hit receive, it shows that QR code, you show it to somebody else, and they pay you. Securing your money, of course, you need to have 
people hold their own keys, and so you need to give them easy ways and easy explanation of what they're doing when they're backing up their seed. So we have a nice little process for getting the person to write down their seed and you know, verifying that they have stored it correctly and backing things up. We also have a really great free backup service for the, the, the wallet state, your lightning channels, et cetera, um, and also the other features we're going to talk about, where we automatically provide encrypted backups to the user. So it doesn't matter if you have an iCloud account or a Google Cloud. You can just know that, that you have at least our company providing free backup services. We will additionally add the ability for you to redundantly store them yourself and the ability to store them in any cloud you want to. Boost Bitcoin. So we've added this little feature in here. Uh, I don't know how much of you follow the controversies about the RBF feature and CPFP, but we've got both in BitKit. You, if you ever have a transaction that's taking too long to confirm and you really want to push that through, we have this little button where you can add an extra fee to it. You can add extra fees to incoming and outgoing transactions using CPFP or RBF. RBF is off by default. You have to turn it on. So financial freedom. Grandma can pay instantly. I mentioned earlier one way that you can onboard into Lightning easier than ever, and we're going to go through a few other features with Lightning that are inside of BitKit. Um, connect in a flash. So if you want to manually configure your channel, we still, again, don't make it complicated. We just say, you know, enable instant payments. And we give you a couple slides where you have to configure this. How much money do you want to be able to spend instantly? How much money do you want to be able to receive instantly? You set those two things, you confirm, and you're on Lightning. Quickly paying people. Um, this is a cue to some more cool features we're going to mention in the next set. But you can see here, the person that has used this has just set an amount, chosen a contact, and just hit pay. That's it. Very quick payments, quick because of lightning, quick because of setup, no complication. How does this work? Well, we've deeply integrated our LSP server called Block Tank, which is a separate product and service that we um, launched in March, I believe. And this enables any wallet, any exchange, any platform to be able to integrate Lightning capabilities without having to run Lightning themselves or to any degree which they wish to run Lightning themselves. So the wallet in BitKit is actually powered by a node, a very lightweight node that runs very quickly, made by the people at Spiral um, called LDK. We've implemented LDK into React Native, which is all developer stuff inside of our wallet. And we've integrated block tank, our LSP, so this is how we can be more sensitive to what the user, user is trying to accomplish when they're trying to get onto Lightning and when they're trying to make Lightning payments to make them all very reliable and very fast. We also give the, the normal kind of fees, you, I mean, sorry, the normal kind of features you would expect for coin management and connecting to the Lightning Network. So if you are an advanced user, you can enable coin selection, which is something where you pick which Bitcoin you want to spend when you're spending. And you can also go into the networks area of the settings and look at all of your, your Lightning channels and manage them like you would in a traditional Lightning app. The third section, freedom of speech. Grandma won't get canceled. Um, this is where we start getting into the really unique features. So, you know, as you may know, we, we have this whole vision, and it's not just about Bitcoin, it's not just about Lightning, but it's definitely not about shitcoins, it's definitely not about Web3. We want to make sure that you are who you are no matter where you go, whether or not Twitter, or not Twitter likes you, or whether or not the site doesn't like what you're saying. So we've incorporated this feature of a portable, portable public profile. This is using our slash tags technology, which I'll talk more, talk more about as we go. But basically, within BitKit, you will automatically get a profile, which is a new type of key that is derived from your Bitcoin seed. So you can have your whole digital life just in your Bitcoin seed. And when you restore a BitKit wallet, you don't just restore your coins. You restore your identity, your accounts, your profiles, your contacts, all of the data that is centered around you. So now you have this social profile, which includes a photo, a custom name, a bio, and you can even include a link list of different ways that people can reach you. So you can put your Twitter account in there, you can put your personal website, your blog, anything you want, really, label and data. 
And when somebody wants to add you to their BitKit wallet using the slash tags tech, you just show them this QR code. This QR code will add you to their contacts. Dynamic contacts is a concept where we're taking the concept of, say, your, your Twitter profile, where every time you update it on Twitter's server, all of the people that follow you can see that update, right? But normally in your phone, when you use contacts, you've got like, you know, your ex-girlfriend in there, your, your grandmother, like her old number that she doesn't have anymore. You have like these stale contacts and you keep porting them over the years from one phone to another. And you've got to enter in all the data yourself, right? Well, the contacts in BitKit are dynamic. So I make my contact data in my phone. And when you add me, you're actually getting the data through this really cool, you know, you, you may have learned some about it with Keat and with the pair credit presentation we did yesterday, um, this DHT technology where you have a whole network of people that can see data for you and they can't manipulate that data. That data is controlled by your key and it can only be updated by your key. And these keys are stored inside of BitKit. So you can have, like, say, you want to update your Twitter account or you want to change your, where your blog website is or any other data that you want to put in your profile. When you change it, your profile in BitKit, somebody that has added you as a contact will automatically see that new information. So the contacts are fully dynamic, always up to date to what the user wants them to be, not what you do. You, know, you don't have to manage your own contact database. Another really cool part about this is we've added a whole payment layer and payment protocol inside of slash tags, inside of these profiles. So not only can you, you know, use this as a contact method, use this as a public profile, you can also pay to these things. So if you want to, you can, instead of showing somebody a Bitcoin invoice or a Bitcoin public key to get paid, you can actually show them your slash tag, your BitKit profile QR code shown here. And what happens is, your BitKit app looks at what payment methods the app currently supports and you have liquidity for, like how much Bitcoin you have on chain, how much Lightning you have, and it looks at the same thing from your peer. And they pull these payment preferences data dynamically. So if you add more different payment types that you can support, and if Bitcoin continues to add, say, more different address methods, we had, you know, legacy, SegWit, we've got Taproot coming through, we're going to have different channel types, we're going to have token channel types in the future, Slash tags abstracts all of those just behind your profile. So you just say, what payment methods do I support? And then you, you have a payment preference, and it, the, the apps in the background match which ways your, your payment can go through and automatically, automatically pay them. So for example, on mobile phones, you can't have Lightning open all the time. Even though there's a node in BitKit, you can't necessarily receive a live Lightning payment when you're offline. So what happens if I choose a contact and I want to pay them, but they don't have their phone open or they don't have their Lightning endpoint online? It will automatically default to an on-chain address. So you'll be able to give a, a custom address for each of your contacts whenever they want to pay you. So you have a dedicated address anytime they want to pay you and you can refresh those addresses. Same thing with Lightning. When they want to pay you with Lightning, you can create an invoice for that person for the amount they want to pay you and pay it right then and there. So this is another really cool, really different thing that we're bringing to the wallet scene and really all of apps, again, using slash tags, hypercore, hole punch, et cetera, peer-to-peer um, -peer feeds and widgets. Within BitKit, you'll see a section where you have widgets. You don't just have your Bitcoin. You don't just have your profile. You don't just have your contacts. You have these widgets. So, so what's a widget? You know, you have these data feeds that we're doing on the DHC that I mentioned, which is like a totally decentralized thing where you control the data, and it, but anybody can host it for you with integrity. And you can take this data and you can feed it into the app dynamically, just like we do with the contact information, but with any information. So basically, here are a few use cases you can see. One, this will be ready soon, but in Bitfinex, in your Bitfinex account, you'll be able to add a slash tags feed and see your Bitfinex account data in BitKit without having to log in at all. You'll just have a data stream directly from your personal account that's personally for you, showing things like your profit and loss of any open trades, your balance you know, of USD, your balance of Bitcoin, really anything that Bitfinex wants to choose to give you as an option to show there, you can set it and you can display it there and see it live along with your Bitcoin balance. You can do this for any account data in any website. 
Additionally, for Bitfinex and again, any accounts, you'll be able to log in this way, but we'll get, we'll get to that more in a bit. Um, you could do things like get updates from Key. This is not working yet, but it will be. <laughs> um, and we've included some stock widgets, basically, to show you and hopefully expand the minds and, and imagination of, the, of builders and developers because you really can do anything with this. You just put data in there, you stream it, and you have some schema for interpreting the data, displaying it in any application, and then every application can do it. You could build a whole application just out of different data feeds and widgets. So we have uh, examples here are we have a data feed of the Bitcoin price. So we're just streaming into you know, this, this decentralized platform. Anybody can add this data, this data feed of the Bitcoin price, and it's just live streaming constantly up to date. And because the whole history is there, you can actually do things like render a price chart. Uh, we also have another demo widget shown here, which is we've compiled, I don't know, 10 or so different RSS feeds of different websites that have Bitcoin headlines. And so in your phone, you can have a widget that just shows the latest Bitcoin headline. And if you tap on it, you can visit that website and read that article. Accounts. So you've seen probably some of you that you can, that some people are experimenting with logging in using keys or logging in with a QR code. Uh, a really cool part about this is you don't need a password to do it. You just basically need to prove you have a key. But an advancement on, on this that we were able to accomplish, use, again, using slash tags is it's not just one-sided. The website has to prove they are the website you expect too. So we're doing things like making it harder to have middleman attacks and making it harder for websites to be censored as well. Suppose you have an account at the Pirate Bay or something. You've, I don't know, you've paid to be able to get the best torrents or something. Um, if the Pirate Bay gets taken down, the Pirate Bay still has their key. They may not own their domain, but they can take that key to any server in any domain and prove again that you're in the right website and you can still log in no matter where you go. So we actually have an implementation of this with a company called Starbacker. They're a startup trying to do, you know, adult friendly kind of like OnlyFans social media. Now imagine, you know, this is, this is a risky situation. I, I want to make a profile on this website. I want to have my fans. Maybe I'm a cam girl. Maybe I'm, you know, whatever. I'm doing, I'm doing behavior that not every website actually likes. But if Starbacker decides to cancel me, I still am me no matter where I go. I have my profile. I have my key. They can't cancel me. They can only decide to stop serving my data. So Starbacker, right now, today, when you install BitKit, you can go to their website. You can make an account just by scanning your QR code. No email address, no personal information, nothing. You just go there, scan the QR code, log in. And if you want to, you can even have Starbacker pull your public profile data that we talked about earlier and populate your account with that data. You can say, use my photo, use my name, use my bio, etc. So you can start seeing how these profiles could be used everywhere. So how is this possible? As I mentioned, we have this really cool um, protocol that we've been working on creating called Slash Tags. Today, we're actually formally, re formally releasing what's pretty much the first version of it. We've got a Slash Tags SDK. We've got a new website. We've got a bunch of content for hand-holding. Uh, we've got a whole playground, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, these are some of the features. You know, I, I've run through most of them with you today, but these are all things powered by slash tags. Portable profiles, distributed feeds, negotiated payments, modular widgets, dynamic contacts, passwordless accounts, the magical keychain, and encrypted backups. The Playground and SDK are live right now if you want to play with them when you get home. Um, the Playground basically includes several examples of how you can create user experiences in your website and your application using profiles, using slash tags, using contacts, using slash pay, the payment features. All the things we talked about today can be put in your hands in any application. Anybody that wants to support slash tags can. It's a free open protocol, open source. Anybody can contribute to it and anybody can implement it, especially a lot easier now that we have our first SDK out. So yeah, that's BitKit. That's the summary of it. It's available now. I hope all of you give it a try. I will disclaim that it is in beta. <laughs> um, and so I know you will find bugs. So it's a beta testing situation. But it works very nice. It looks very nice. I look forward to all of you giving it a try. Here are some things that are coming up. 
from slash tags and BitKit. Um, you saw hopefully yesterday where we announced pair credit, which is a way of doing tokens in any form of credit without a blockchain at all, instant, free, peer-to-peer, -peer, no routing, no liquidity problems. We'll support that in BitKit next year. So you'll be able to have, say, for example, te instant tether tokens that you can transport for free without having to use a shitcoin and without having to use Bitcoin. Um, subscriptions, memberships, allowances. We're also next year going to add the ability to buy Bitcoin. Um, a lot more widgets, a lot more cool ideas that we have for showing you slash tags and widgets within the application and future products. Um, and we're going to start working on reputation and storage markets, which are really important primitives for peer-to-peer -peer web solutions. Um, but we'll probably talk a lot more about that next year. So again, you can scan this QR code to be a part of the limited public beta testing. Uh, um, I think it's limited to maybe 2,000 people or so, 1,000 for each platform, so get it quick. And I look forward to your feedback and your consideration with all of our products and vision. Thank you.